there, there are some who would disagree with, with me on this, but uh, my perspective is that there are very, very few. If you look at what he has done in international arena, he's done more harm than uh, good. Uh, they're, 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 I know, for example, even even kind of his achievements, well, achievements of his administration, uh, in a lot of cases where there has been a diplomatic process going on, uh, I don't know, the, the trade war with Europe or with China, for example, uh, Trump's tweets on multiple occasions derailed the whole negotiation process where his diplomats wow. are on the, on the ground. They've been talking for months about, well, how we can fix this, what the US wants, what, what Europe wants, what China wants, and so on. And then Trump just tweets something that's totally removed from what's happening in these discussion processes and derails, derails the whole negotiation process. Mm -hmm. uh, and it makes it extremely hard for US diplomats to get you know, the good deal Trump has promised uh, if he yeah. simply doesn't really um, well, essentially listen to his, his what, what's happening in this negotiation room. He just tweets whatever he wants. Uh, the same thing with, with foreign policy. Uh, on many occasions, uh, Trump simply has poured more oil into the fire with his tweets, uh, with his changing his decisions. Um, I know his kind of big achievements. Uh, he went and talked with Kim uh, Jong-un, uh, with, with the North Korean leader initially, so he kind of got this deal where they're going to stop and uh, kind, of, kind of continuing their nuclear program. Yeah, on paper, it's a deal. In reality, nothing has really changed. You know, North Korea is working on its missile, missile, missile program, on its nuclear program. So, you know, Trump got this, this win on paper. He, he was very loud about it. You know, we've, I've done it. It's amazing. You know, Barack yeah. Obama never did anything. But if you have a deal on paper, it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's actually happening in the real world. Uh, there, there is a, uh, there is a uh, so, I don't know, you can put on paper anything. If you don't have mechanisms how to check it, if you don't have mechanisms how to enforce it, and, and Trump and the treaty with, with North Korea didn't have any of this, um, nothing really changes. So there, there, is, there are a lot of these things. For example, another thing, some people in Latvia also believe this, uh, that uh, Trump made NATO countries spend more. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, so Trump inherited a very good economy from Barack mm -hmm. Obama. Trump yes. inherited also uh, essentially the, the, the pledge in NATO summit in 2014, 2016, before Trump. NATO countries yeah. already had pledged to essentially Barack Obama administration, that they will increase their defense budgets to up to 2%, and they had essentially set a timeline. So for, for Baltic state, it was, uh, I think, 2018. Uh, for Germany, 2022. For other countries, uh, essentially other kind of timelines when they're going to reach this 2% goal. And they started increasing budgets already in 2014, in some cases, or 2016, after the Russian aggression in Ukraine. So it wasn't Trump which made the countries increase their defense budget. It was Barack Obama. And then Trump, by all this rhetoric, uh, Kind of created this illusion that he hijacked. made, uh, yeah, essentially hijacked. That, that's that's one thing. Another thing is um, that um, um, I'm not even sure if if there have been any cases where a country has increased the defense budget. Maybe Poland, but I'm not sure about this. But, but for most countries, it is very hard to increase, especially for for major European great powers. It is hard to increase the defense budget now. Because, you know, Macron or Merkel, they're going to look weak if under Trump's bullying, they agreed that, well, yes, I need to cave in and I'm going to increase my budget because Trump ordered me to do so. It's become even harder for European leaders to increase defense budgets mm -hmm. because it's going to look essentially, you know, you're, you're in charge of this uh, great history. Well, you're essentially weak. You're a weak yeah. leader. You're listening to this bully, and you're essentially say it, doing what he tells you to do. So there might even be this, this, this kind of backlash by, by Trump ordering European allies around, do this, do that. Um, of course, if you are a leader of a great European nation, you just can't cave in in these kind of, kind of bullying remarks by, by Donald Trump. Uh, so, so there might be even the opposite effect, uh, that, 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 that the leaders are not inclined to uh, increase the defense budget just because Trump orders them to do so not going through. And this is overall the kind of, kind of Trump's, Trump's kind of foreign policy approach and also domestic foreign policy approach, uh, giving these commands, orders. Uh, in domestic politics, Trump has been using much more these executive orders uh, than any president before him, mm -hmm. simply writing these, these kind of presidential directives, uh, well, do this. Because uh, uh, this is his, his style, you know, as, as a dictator, as a king, well, do this, follow me. And there's no diplomatic process, no even kind of domestic consultation process uh, that's going on in the United States uh, because U.S. president simply does not kind of believe in it or, or, or think that's how, how a uh, domestic or foreign policy should be conducted. And probably that's what he's used to by being in charge of a big company because there he's paying everyone. If the people are not doing what he says, he can simply fire them. He can't fire Merkel, he can't fire Macron, uh, you know, with, with closest allies, you just can't order them around. And, and for some reason, there's a backlash against U.S. foreign policy across uh, most of the world. And again, f for other countries and regions, for Israel, definitely Trump has been very beneficial for Saudi Arabia. Uh, so Barack Obama tried to distance uh, United States from kind of 
uh, Saudi Arabia and then uh, Israel, he tried to essentially kind of kind of become more, you know, hands off this balance of power approach in the region. Uh, Trump well and went all in. We are going to support Saudi Arabia and, and, and Israel, and, and who cares about Iran? We need to punish them. So mm -hmm. definitely, for some countries, definitely Trump has been very, very a, um, a good president. Uh, but but if you look at uh, kind of Baltic perspective and, and European perspective. Uh, for example, the defense budget has been increased, uh, the NATO presence here has been increased, not because of Trump. Uh, U.S. Congress uh, assigns defense budget for uh, NATO for this region. If the Congress votes, um, well, spend more, uh, then U.S. military is going to spend more. Trump has nothing to do with the fact that there is more stuff and, and happening in, in, in the kind of defense area and in Baltics and in Poland. Um, yeah, and just to add another thing on this, uh, U.S. Congress in 2016, when, US, uh, when Trump became U.S. president, U.S. C Congress passed a law that Donald Trump is not allowed to ease sanctions on Russia. So U.S. Congress felt in 2016, after Trump became president, yeah. that they need to constrain Trump's foreign policy making powers because we cannot trust him with Russia. So, uh, well, I, as, as I said, I'm very, very cynical and critical about any Trump's accomplishments mm -hmm. uh, because for most of the, the part, he's been essentially pouring oil in the flames. Uh, and, and if something good has happened, uh, it's very, very highly doubtful that, that, that Trump has been the author of these good changes. And even on multiple occasions, like with NATO, also Middle Eastern, uh, so there was this, this treaty between Israel and Jordan and a couple other countries, uh, and then U.S. jumps on it. Trump jumps on it. Hey, I did this. I did it. I, I made this. Not really. So there's this local domestic process, uh, which Trump administration tried to kind of kind of take and sell us theirs. And on multiple occasions, uh, that's what Trump has tried to do, say that, well, I've done this, whatever this is, uh, or kind of oversell achievements. Uh, this, this trade war with the U.S. had with Europe, it ended essentially with nothing. Uh, the trade, the, the sanctions U.S. imposed, Europe imposed is still in place. They agreed that Europe is going to buy more soybeans or something meaningless like that. And then Trump sell this as a big win. I won this trade war with Europe, and so they're going to buy more soybeans. It, it's not, you know. <laughs> so yeah, very often. So there, there is big, big difference between what Trump says and what's actually happening on on the ground. And and for a lot of people, if Trump says this again and again and again, and media repeats it, it it, it well, of course, it, it makes sense. It's U.S. president, you know. Well, usually when U.S. president says something, it, it's credible. Uh, but this is a big, also, and if you study political science and international relations, it's, it's not only with Trump, but on a lot of occasions, so the words are very different than, 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 than deeds, than what's actually happening on the ground. And it is hard, it takes time, you have to kind of, kind of read and then follow the events uh, to see the, the, the big, 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 big picture. It's not just with Trump, it's, um, it's a very big problem in how you are analysis that uh, you can say one thing and reality can be very, very different.